Welcome to Chess Dog, where players come to get stronger at chess. I'm John Montgomery, and he is back. I'm referring to Abamanu Mishra, the youngest grandmaster in history. He took a little bit of a break after winning the grandmaster title and playing in one more event that he had committed to. He's taken a, an extended break, I'm sure, to uh, go to school, and uh, he's only 12 years old after all. Uh, but he has now returned back into competition. He competed at the U.S. Masters in 2021 uh, just recently. And I want to share one of his games with you against uh, Josiah Stearman. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Abamanyu Mishra's FIDE rating in this game is 2517. His opponent's rating is 2413. Abamanyu has the white pieces. Let's jump right in. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. The Grunfeld defense. In this position, black is going right after white's center, wants to attack that center and tear it apart. The main line here is cd5, knight d5, e4, knight c3, bc3. And white gets a big center, but black is going to attack it, play bishop g7, c5. What Abamanyu does instead is play knight to f3. And the goal here in what is after queen to b3 is going to be called the Russian system. The main purpose of this line for white is to create a, a bit of a smaller center, but one that's easier to defend and harder to attack. Bishop g7, queen to b3, putting pressure on the d5 square, so dc4, queen c4, castles, and e4. And here we have white center with pawns at d4 and e4, a little smaller than the other center, but again, much harder to attack. Black plays knight to c6, applying direct pressure to the d4 square, bishop to e2, and e5. The move mo that's been most commonly played here historically is bishop to g4, but this move is under a bit of a cloud right now. Um, White's main idea here is to play d5, and after knight to a5, queen to b4, hitting the knight. And if black plays b6, defending the knight, then e5 hits the knight at f6 with a pawn, and also the queen attacks the g4 bishop. So instead, black pretty much has to go ahead and trade first, and then defend the knight. And in this case, white has the two bishops and a space advantage, and... Uh, uh, Black does definitely definitely not want that. So the main move now, the most common move played at the higher levels, is really the move e5, directly attacking the center, giving up a pawn, but for a, a lot of counterplay. d5, the knight jumps into d4, takes, takes, queen takes. So white is up a pawn, but the dark squares are weak in the center, the bishop at g7 is screaming down that long diagonal, and white hasn't castled yet. So black is looking for a counterplay here, and uh, he plays c6, beginning to nibble at white's center. There's a pin along that d file, so white can't take the pawn. The queen moves out of the pin to c4, and b5, the most aggressive move in this position, giving up a second pawn but opening up more lines of attack for the pieces. So basically, we know what's going to happen now. Abamanyu with the white pieces is up material and has a nice structure. But black has a lot of piece activity. The question will be, can Abamanyu neutralize that activity and get the better position, or will black's pieces overwhelm him? Let's watch and see what happens. He takes the second pawn, bishop to d7, Queen to d6. The queen is right in the center of the board, where it can cause black a lot of problems, but it can also be a target. One thing it does do is help control that e5 square, so white may be able to push the e-pawn forward. Rook to e8. Black places the rook opposite white's king, and also threatens the e4-pawn. Notice white has not castled even yet. White plays e5. The queen supports that move. Knight to g4. Now that e5 pawn is attacked three times, the knight at g4, the bishop at f6, and the rook at e8. And just to show you how dangerous this position can be for white, if white plays what looks to be a very natural move, f4, defending the pawn, 
Then after knight takes pawn, giving up more material, pawn takes, bishop takes, white is in huge, huge trouble. If white plays queen to b4 to try to maybe control a queen check from h4 from black, then a5, kicking the queen further, the queen goes to c5, and then b4, kicking the knight away, if knight d1, bishop to g4, and look at all of those pieces swarming, they still as of yet uncastled white king. And if white were to say take that bishop, then bishop d4 check reveals the check of the rook and the queen would be lost. And so this is the kind of compensation black can get in this position. White has to be very careful here. What Abamanyu does, he decides to give a little bit of the material back to uh, neutralize that initiative a little bit. Plays e6. Black takes. h3, kicking the knight. Now all of this had been played up to this point before. Uh, Maxim Bashir Lagrav had has had this position twice against very strong opposition, 2750 level opponents, Duda, and also Yun Yang Yi. And uh, Lagrav played knight to e5 in both of those games. They both ended in draws. In his game against Yu, uh, he went d e6. Maxim played bishop e6. Takes, takes, bishop b5, bishop c4. Bishop takes rook, knight to d3, check, and it looks really sharp, but it really kind of peters out into nothing. King f1, bishop c3, b c3, knight c1, discovered, check. King g1, knight e2, check. King h2 and rook e8. And white has a rook and two pawns versus the miners, and this is really, when the smoke clears, a fairly uh, equal endgame, and it did end in a draw. But, Abamanyu's opponent, Stearman, plays a new move. He plays knight to f6. White finally castles. He play, his opponent plays bishop to f8, hitting the queen. He could have played ed5, then after say bishop e3, then to play bishop takes h3. And the queens would have to be traded. And after queen d8, rook ed8, pawn takes, and d4 wins that piece back, the one that was sacrificed on h3. And again, you have an approximately equal endgame. Bishop to f8 is a little riskier. Uh, the white queen goes to f4, pawn takes, and bishop to f3. So both pawns have been given back. The two pawns that Abamanyu was up have been given back, but in exchange he has permanent advantages. He has a much safer king now. His king is the safer king at the moment. You'll see the how airy it is around black's king, all those open squares. Uh, also he has a, a better pawn structure. Um, black has an isolated queen's pawn, and this is not one of those positions where it's a big advantage. Although it is passed, he does have to be a little careful, but uh, white basically has a safer king and a better pawn structure. And that's it. And so now we see how Abamanyu is able to use these advantages. Bishop to c6, defends d5, bishop to e3. We know that with a, an isolated queen's pawn, we want to control the square in front of that pawn to keep it from advancing. I'm going to blockade that pawn. Bishop e3 controls that square. Bishop to d6 hits the queen. Queen to d4. Bishop e5 hits the queen again. Queen moves to c5. Rook to c8. An x-ray attack against the queen. It's not immediately threatened because the bishop is in, is in the way, but it could become a threat. Rook a to d1. Now white has x-ray pressure against black's queen. a6, defending the b5 pawn. Bishop g5 pins the knight at f6 and puts indirect pressure on the pawn at d5 because the knight's defending that pawn, so sort of building up pressure on that pawn. Now here, uh, black plays bishop to e8. Turns out this was a critical mistake. It's, it's a bit hard to see. Perhaps a more accurate move, a computer likes to move king to g7, just kind of keeping things a little more solid, defending the knight at f6. Of uh, the reason this move, uh, bishop to a8, doesn't work so well is because of this idea, and Abamanyu does play the best move, queen to a3, immediately putting pressure on the a6 pawn. Black plays d4, and after exchanging bishops, queen to b3 check, king to g7, and now this really terrific move from Abamanyu, f4, hitting that bishop at e5. And you notice the knight cannot be taken because there's a pin still on the d-file. So the bishop does have to move. 
And then when the bishop moves to d6, boom, knight to d5. Abimani was piling on to that f6 knight. Not only did the bishop and the knight attack it, but also the threat of pawn f4, f5, opening up the f file so the rook can apply pressure is, uh, is there too. It's really a bad situation for, for black. Bishop e7 to defend the knight. The knight takes the bishop. Now the pin stays. Rook to e7, f5, trying to open up that file, get at those squares. Rook to f7 to defend the knight, but it's still pinned to the queen, so it doesn't take away the pin. Pawn takes pawn, and here he plays king takes pawn. Actually, it doesn't matter which way he takes. He's in big trouble either way. If he, if he takes with the pawn, then bishop to h6 check. If the king takes the bishop, the queen would take the rook at f7. King to g8, then queen to g3. That's a, a computer recommendation. It's like plus 8 for white. It's just totally winning uh, in this situation. Far too many pieces in the attack. So uh, Stearman plays king takes g6. Now rook to f3. He wants to play that rook to g3 to create a discovery along the g file. And if black were to say take the bishop, then queen would take the rook. So the bishop is still uh, invulnerable. The queen goes to d6. He wants to control the g3 square so the rook can't go to g3 and set up that discovered attack. But just bishop to f4, queen to d5, rook to g3, check. And then after king to h5, rook to g5, check. And the game is over. He wins a full queen for a rook. He doesn't even get the queen and the bishop. For example, if he takes here, bishop takes, the king can't retake because then still the rook would fall. So after rook to g5 check, Josiah Stearman resigns and Abimanyu Mishra gets another victory. So welcome back, Abimanyu. We're glad you're back into tournament play. I look forward to your future success. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.